Our interview this afternoon is with Dwayne C. Payne. Dwayne was born near Hillsboro, Texas, July of 1923. He served in the United States Army Air Force during World War II. His highest rank attained was corporal. Today is Friday, August the 29th, 2014, and this interview is conducted at Fort Worth, Texas. My name is Dale Dexheimer. Also in the room is Milton Gibson, our videographer. We are not related to Duane and then in any way. Interview is conducted for the Veterans History Project at the Library of Congress and also Operation Remember in Burleson, Texas. And with that, Duane, you can tell us about your time in the U.S. military, sir. Well, should I start with my service in the National Guard? Yes, sir. That was before? Well, uh, I was in the National Guard in uh, 1930, 1939 and 40. I was in the National Guard. And uh, I became private first class there. Of course, I was underage, but at that time they didn't check ages in the National Guard. So uh, uh, when the war broke out, and uh, I knew that I was at the age that I would be called. And uh, so I was walking down the street in Dallas one day and uh, saw a little booth there that says, join the Air Force. So I went and told them that I wanted to join the Air Force. Uh, the National Guard, the last I uh, spent with them, I had, had to walk 11 miles. And we started at 10 o'clock at night and walked till four the next morning. And uh, so I decided I didn't want anything like that. <laughs> so I wanted the Air Force so I could fly wherever I went. Uh, so I joined the Air Force there and uh, went to a little base close to Corpus Christi. And uh, from there, they uh, sent me to uh, Madison, Wisconsin, Truax Field. Madison, Wisconsin. And there they had me to study radio, uh, radio on the plane. So uh, the pilot, you know, could talk with other planes and so forth. So I spent uh, about five and a half months in uh, Madison, Wisconsin. And uh, while I was there, of course, we walked to the barracks and so forth. And uh, the thing that I remember about that the most 
most, I guess, was the long uh, icicles. The icicles in Madison, Wisconsin were about five or six feet long, hanging off the building. I remember that. Uh, then, when I got through at uh, Madison, Wisconsin, I passed all the tests in the radio. So I was recognized as a radio man on the fighter plane. And, uh, but they weren't through with me there. They said, uh, would you like to study radar? I said, yeah, I would. So from uh, Madison, Wisconsin, they shipped me all the way across the country to Boca Raton, Florida. And uh, kind of <coughs> a different situation. But I studied uh, radar and at that time it was so uh, secret that even though I was on the base, they had us to go to a wall uh, building around it, and uh, you had to identify yourself to get in, even though I was just going in there for uh, Study. But while I was at Boca Raton then, I studied radar and I passed the test. And uh, I learned uh, enough about the radar that I could build a set. Uh, just give me a schematic diagram and I could, I built one uh, while I was in there. And uh, I wanted to, to look real good so the wires underneath the uh, radar that I built I had them all going to a corner, a cross, corner, cross. All of them, no, just running across. I uh, had it all uh, so they took a picture of the bottom of that thing. But it looked so good, you know, with those wires all going uh, across and uh, not straight, but going to a corner to a cross. Uh, now, uh, with that, he considered me ready to go overseas. So he sent me to uh, a place in North Carolina. I, I forget the name of the place. In North Carolina, but they sent me there to 
to get ready to go overseas. Well, North Carolina is a bad place for a person allergic to ragweed and, and uh, who the leaves off the trees there. They gave off a lot of A lot of dust and stuff. So I began to <coughs> cough and sneeze, and run a little temperature, and they'd send me to the hospital. Well, in there, in the hospital, there was no dust and stuff, so I'd get on my feet real quick. Uh, I'd go back out and then uh, uh, I'd come up with that dust and so forth back to the hospital. So that happened about two or three times. And uh, the last time, they said, well, said, you're allergic. Uh, and they said, uh, we're just going to discharge you. So. That was it. Interesting year. <clears throat> the year was 43. So I was discharged <clears throat> because I was allergic to that uh, dust and what those trees and everything in North Carolina gave off. Of course, I was going to go to the South Pacific, and I doubt if I'd have gone that I'd have gotten sick at all. But, of course, they wouldn't take a chance. We <clears throat> back up a little bit, Dwayne. Uh, you were born just 70 miles south of where we are right now, something like that, Hillsboro, down around uh, there. 60. What'd your dad do? Dad was a farmer. That's all he did that I can remember. He bought a farm at a little place north of Hillsboro called Mayfield. And uh, he had uh, nine kids. Six boys, three girls, and uh, and he taught us how to chop cotton, <laughs> whole corn, and uh, he bought a tractor and a binder. And we cut our oats, barley, and we didn't fool with wheat because it didn't grow too well there. It was mainly oats and barley that 
we used the binder for. And then we uh, used the binder to go and uh, bind the the uh, barley and stuff like that for the neighbors. So this was a, <coughs> a tractor pulled? It, this was not a stationary? Oh, it was a tractor. Okay. We'd get in a tractor and a binder and just take a swath about this wide Go right down that patch of oats till it was all bound up and the bundles about that big around. So this was a binder, it wasn't a thrasher? No. Did you, did you take it to a thrashing machine in the corner of the field or something? Uh, yeah, when wherever we, uh, Whenever it had cured good, uh, we would uh, tell the, the thrashing people that we were ready for the thrasher. So the thrasher would come and set up, and we'd have uh, uh, our wagons loaded. <coughs> <clears throat> with uh, hay or before the before the oats were separated we'd load them on uh, in bundles load them on a uh, wagon pull up next to the thrasher, put those bundles in the thrasher. That thrasher, was it a steam engine or, or was it gasoline? No, how, how it, uh, uh, it was a long, uh, Anyway, the uh, the tractor uh, was about oh fifty feet from the thrasher, and that way the belt would go to the thrasher. And the wagon that could come on each side and uh, you'd go up right next to the thrasher, put it in there and go on without getting tangled up in anything because the belt was long and had room. So you <coughs> grew up on the farm yeah. So you had a pretty good mechanical background. You could fix things. Yeah. Uh, I learned a number of things. Of course, when you have all that machinery, you learn how to take care of it. Take care of the tractor. <coughs> we own the tractor. And we owned a, a disc uh, plow, a disc go like that, and so the. This was really during the depression, then, wasn't it, Dwayne? Yeah. Nineteen thirties. Yeah. Was your dad affected much by the depression, being a farmer? No, uh, 
He have, kind, of, kind of enjoyed it. You have a couple cows and chickens and hogs and what have you? Yeah, we had uh, the most cows we had at one time was six. And I learned how to milk a cow when I was about eight years old. <laughs> they put the cow in there and give her some feed so she'd behave while you were milking her. And uh, a, my older brother had taught me how to grab a hold of that cow tit and squeeze that milk into the, into the can. And uh, And we drank milk at breakfast and dinner. At noon, we always drank tea. And uh, so that was pretty well it till I went to college. So you graduated high school somewhere down there? Hillsboro High School. Hillsboro. And you did go to college. Where did you, you go to college? Well, I spent a little time at Hillsboro Junior College. And then uh, I went to Howard Payne okay. College in Brownwood. <coughs> spent a year there. And I got a job uh, at a church at Hillsboro. Uh, I was a music uh, student. So then uh, I went out to Howard Payne. I studied music there. And then I got a job at Hillsboro in music. And when I did that, I went to Baylor. I spent five years in Baylor University. And uh, There, I finally decided that I would be a music teacher in the public schools. So I um, became a teacher. But uh, I directed church choirs for many years while I was uh, going to school they'd pay me for directing the choir and that helped my expense when did you enlist in the National Guard Jim? I enlisted in the National Guard in uh, 19, is either 39, I believe it was 1939 or 38, because I was in the National Guard probably over two years. Were you going to Baylor? while you were in the Guard? No. You had already completed Baylor? No. I hadn't started the Baylor. Oh, okay. Uh, when I went to uh, the National Guard, 
That is while I was still in high school. Okay. At that time, they didn't check their ages. But I think when I enlisted in the National Guard, I was about 16 years old. But uh, they didn't seem to care. So uh, I, <coughs> I think I made a dollar every time we met to would once a week. Once a week? When I was a na National Guard. Okay. Did they send you to any kind of basic training, Dwayne, or? You mean the National Guard? Yes, sir. Yeah. No, they trained us right there. And so you drilled in Hillsboro or Waco? Hillsboro. Hillsboro, okay. Yeah, I was in the National Guard while I was still in high school. So at Hillsboro, I was going to Hillsboro High School. And uh, so uh, I did my National Guard while I was in high school. And after I graduated from high school, it was about time for them to, to draft me. Well, I'd had experience in the National Guard. After taking that 11 mile walk that night, that, that uh, took my goose as far as as being in, in the walking army. What was the, the purpose or the mission of the National Guard in those days, in the late 30s? Well, uh, if something happened in the community, that uh, they needed extra forces, something, and they called on the National Guard. In other words, while I was in the National Guard, if they had needed me to uh, uh, be on guard, or something that happened where they needed a number of people, then that's what I've done. So the purpose of the National Guard was to take care of any sudden trouble in, in the uh, community and uh, then uh, that, that was about it. Get ready for the, for the walking army and the real, real army. Did you have like a company in Hillsboro? Yeah. So you had 140, 150 guys that were? Uh, let's see. I believe our company had 108. 108. I believe it's 108. Company L. That's were they called up during the war? Yeah. Were, but I had left them and and uh, went in the Air Force. Mm -hmm. 
I didn't want any more of the walking army. Did you do a little marching in the even in the Air Force though? Did they? they oh yeah. Okay. Not a whole lot, but enough that we knew how to march. You went to radio school, and that was an operator school. It was an operator school, but you got some maintenance. You knew how everything worked. Uh, we knew if something happened to that set, we knew how to fix it. Okay. Our our job on the radio was to keep it going. If like one day a fighter plane came into the field where I was and they that he had double uh, his radio. So I worked on it some. And we finally got it working okay. But a job was to keep that radio working for the pilot. At that time, the pilot did the talking. And uh, he could talk to the pilots of the other planes flying along. And uh, and that's about the only time that the pilot talked to anybody or did somebody else in a, another plane. Did you do both voice and Morse, Morse code radio? I didn't, uh, I didn't do any code. Okay. I was going to, uh, before I got out, I was going to study the Morse code but I didn't okay. left before I got into it. You went on to radar school, Dwayne. Uh, radar in 1943, which, like you said, was really a secret thing. Yeah. Uh, you were worked on radio that was in the airplane or on the ground. In the airplane. In the airplane. What sort of range did you have on that radar? Well, I know it was good for 16 miles, and I think it was uh, more than that. Seems like it went up to about 60. Okay on the radar. The plane could be flying and way out in the head that radar could spot the enemy on the ground. Okay. And uh, the he could tell exactly where to go to bomb them. And so. So when you got out, when you had your pollen, your dust and pollen, you got out, and that's when you went to Baylor. Yeah. After you, after you got out, got your teaching degree. Right. Uh, I taught the seventh grade through twelve. Taught all of those 
kids uh, that were interested taught them how to sing and uh, got them ready to major in music because that's what I majored in, music. You work with a band too, or, or was it just choral? Oh, I was just assistant band director uh, one year. I didn't fool with, with any, uh, no instruments, because I could play the saxophone, but I never did work with it. Dwayne, we appreciate you coming to visit. You're a little late for lunch now, but uh, you, have a, you have a very good story. You've got a great memory. You remember a lot of things. You're very articulate. Uh, we appreciate it, sir, and we appreciate your time in the military.